So hello, my name is Don. Um, I just finished writing this this morning, so I'm going to be kind of reading this. Um, I've been attending GCC since January, and before I began, uh, before I begin, I want to give a little shout out to my awesome small group. <laughs> who had my back, uh, who have been praying for me uh, in preparation for, for this testimony, and, and I love you guys. I don't know about you guys, but I love you guys. Um, so um, I'm a recently turned Christian, and uh, the first question most people ask is, um, when did you become a Christian? And it's a little complicated. I was uh, born into a non-Christian family who are now all believers. Um, and I uh, spent half of my life in Korea and the other half in the US, moving back and forth every three years since I was eight. I was good at math and English, but I wasn't that typical Asian kid that you, have, you guys are thinking about. Um, when I was in high school in McLean, Virginia, Virginia, Um, my mother started going to church as she met Christ, and I started smoking and drinking a lot. Um, some people may say they hung out with the wrong crowd, but many of my friends say that I was that wrong crowd they hung out with. Um, so I have no one to blame for that. Um, one day in my sophomore year, I lit some paper towel on fire, uh, put it out during chemistry class. Best time to do it. After I left, one of my classmates told on me, um, and I was suspended for five days. Within two weeks since I got back to school, I found out who it was, and I hit him during class. So I was suspended right away for about five months. But I didn't think that would make my testimony interesting enough. So I went to a goodbye party during my second suspension, um, and one of my friends drank, uh, overdrank himself until he couldn't breathe, and uh, we had to call an ambulance. So we were all arrested, and um, my parents picked me up from the police station at 5 a.m. me with my cups. Um, through God's awesome grace, this is not a sad story, by the way. Um, through God's awesome grace, I was able to take all my exams from home and pass all my classes. But moreover, I began going to church. And looking back, um, it was the first time I experienced God using something that looks like the worst situation in the best, best way possible. I heard the gospel and thought I loved God. But now I think I was more excited about being that passionate for something and that being Christ. Um, I learned how to play the guitar, became the praise team leader. I went on a short-term mission, cried with brothers and sisters, told people about Jesus at school. But I struggled to read the Bible, and I didn't really know who God was. God, in his amazing love and grace, still used that shallow passion to begin my relationship with God. Uh, without a deep personal relationship with God, I returned back to my old ways and got worse for nearly 15 years through college, army, work, and back in school. I knew God existed, even experienced him cl clearly working in my life at times. Went to church, called myself a Christian, but remained in charge of my own life. I was on a roller coaster ride, um, like Corey said, with few highs and many lows. I tried with my own efforts not to sin, failed miserably, and after a few unsuccessful attempts, I would be disgusted and disappointed in myself, gave up, and just indulged in sin. I didn't enjoy drinking but I loved being intoxicated because I was afraid of being alone and I, had, I didn't want to face God as I fell deeper and deeper into sin. Um, I surrounded myself with friends of similar interest <clears throat> of uh, who would speak of women, clothing, cars we would one day buy, parties, and we would spend the day getting hyped up on group cacao chat, for those of you in Korea. Uh, about talking about the night out, talking about how it would be amazing and that would get us through the day. After work, we went home, got changed, did our hair, put some BB cream on. For, uh, it, was a, it was a ritual we called setting, where we were setting ourselves before going out. Um, and we would meet around 11, 12 p.m. and we would, we would drink um, usually um, around till 6 to 9 a.m. Um, and those who drove would risk our own and other people's lives driving home intoxicated. Um, however, in most, um, it almost turns out nowhere close to being as fun as I anticipated to be. And I felt miserable in the morning from the hangover. But as the day progresses, the temptation of feeling intoxicated, losing myself in music, and the shallow acceptance by other people seemed exciting again. 
the immediate immediate satisfaction of drinks party feeds me the same um, same lie that it's going to be great but then again someday it actually is um, that's what kept us going back to parties and drinks the idea that today will be that fun day but my trade-off was I spent more money than I made I was abusing my own health had my parents and people around me worried <clears throat> and I couldn't tell friends I was a Christian and for some reason I would even go to church drunk sometimes and still consider myself a Christian. Sin didn't really look like sin when everyone around me had no problem with it. Although I knew of some obvious sins that I was committing before God, I would try to neglect my conscience and run back to sin so that I wouldn't have to face God. And the more I did this, I couldn't bring myself before God anymore. October 1st, 2016, um, I came back to Korea from the US and I drank for the first three days straight and I was hung over in my bed Tuesday the 4th uh, when a close pastor of the family came to visit home for a service. The pastor knew that I was home, so I had to go out to the living room to uh, join the service. And that day, the pastor prayed for me, and he, uh, God spoke through him. God gave me an ultimatum to decide either to follow or not to follow God. And I was actually relieved that God still hasn't given up on me. Uh, he told me two things. He said the Holy Spirit will come take over and guide my life more and more as I obey God. Second, he told me to be mindful of who I hang out with and not to surround myself with our own uh, temptations. After that service, God also restored the joy of praying in me. I would sit in my bed and pray for hours, try to focus on what God is trying to tell me to obey. I tried obeying things um, and anything and everything that I thought he was telling me to do, from going to morning prayers, picking up trash on the streets, not speaking for days, um, to telling people, random people, about Christ when I thought that was what God was telling me to do. I didn't know how to listen to God, so I wasn't sure if it was God telling me to do that. But I trusted that God would see my heart in trying to obey. God began to work in my life and changed my perspectives. When my perspectives began uh, pivoting towards God and his kingdom, I was also blessed to quit many of my obvious sins through his grace and mercy. As the Holy Spirit began working in my life, he taught and guided me through the prayers and scriptures. I started developing a personal relationship with God I didn't know was possible. It was like, it was like God reaching into a thick, sticky sin that I was drowned in, and he pulled me out by his grace. I was amazed each day in the detailed and personal way God showed me who he was, how much he loves me, and what I had been forgiven for, and what God deserves to be in my life. As I realized who God was, I understood 2 Corinthians 12, 9, where it says, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. I am now learning to live a new lifestyle where God is the main focus and not myself. I go before God each day to pray and read the Bible because the time is precious and joyful, but also because I'm lost without God's guide, daily guidance, and I love that. I realized how much I'm loved and that I'm treasured by God enough to pay for my sins and pay for me with the blood of Christ. My identity has been transformed from being in sin to son of God and heir to his kingdom. I may still fall and stumble, but God has changed my purpose in life, and I'll be struggling in the right direction. I'm excited about how God will continue to guide me to grow closer to him and be more like him each day. The past six months have been exciting and challenging, and I have been blessed with many brothers and sisters here in GCC who have been guiding me and mentoring me towards God, including you, Peter. Um, I look forward to getting to know God more, and I thank God for allowing me to stand here today on Resurrection Sunday to speak of his amazing work in my life. Thank you. <laughs>